media, we hear a lot about low testosterone and how it connects to sexual dysfunction. What are some of the other symptoms of low testosterone and how do you treat you know, it? You know, that's a good question. One of the main reasons why guys come in when their wives have uh, sent them here is because they've been jerks. <laughs> <laughs> and they're depressed and they don't know why. And their wives will ask me, is that a symptom of low testosterone? I say, oh, absolutely. Uh, the other one is loss of muscle mass, loss of strength, loss of endurance, and loss of interest in just everything. Mm. Okay, and so let's talk about um, some of the studies that you were taught in medical school that have been flipped on their heads in regards well, to low T. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I mentioned the one about heart disease and testosterone. We now know that's not true. We know it doesn't exacerbate or cause heart disease. To the contrary, it prevents it. Uh, the other one is prostate cancer. It doesn't cause prostate cancer. Yeah, there's a, a gentleman, a physician at Harvard. His name is Abraham Morgenthaler. He's written a book about the subject, and he has disproven that theory. And it set the world of urology on its ear, because I know when what I was taught in medical school, and I know what they're still teaching. Don't give testosterone to older men, because it may just aggravate an underlying prostate cancer problem. No. He, is, he says unequivocally, it does not do that. Also, I was told never to give testosterone to a man with prostate cancer because it's like throwing gas on a fire. And again, not true, just another myth. So these guys that could have life-saving testosterone for a number of years are not given this, this wonderful hormone simply because of myths. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. It needs to change. It could be saving lives. Could be saving happen. lives. Could be helping their hearts. Uh, it could actually be preventing prostate cancer. And what's the resistance to prescribing mm. testosterone? What's the, what's the resistance from the medical community at taking a look at some of these studies and really putting it into practice well, to save good, lives? It's a good question. It takes people who have the courage to do it, first of all. And doctors are, are, are an interesting breed. You know, we go to school for many, many, many years and we learn what we think is correct. And when you have to change your paradigm and your mindset, that's a hard thing to do because it's hard to decide, well, what's right and what's wrong? That's the problem. So we have to change the training programs to reflect the new information that's out there on these subjects. And it just seems to me that <clears throat> hormones affect so many areas. Um, would the training have to... I, I, how, how would you even get the training going it, with um, how many areas of the body it can affect? Oh, well, it's, it's quite a task. This is not an easy thing to do. And like I said, it's like turning the Titanic around. But uh, it, it's all going to start in the field of endocrinology. I have, a, I have an idea. They're, they should be on the leading edge of all of this. And they're still using some antiquated teaching methods. And that needs to change.